Hello guys and welcome to the Differently More podcast. Today we're going to be talking about how to create strong boundaries to finally start living out your life on your terms. But before I get into the three-step framework that I have in store for you to help you along this journey of creating strong boundaries, I'm just going to do a little bit of housekeeping. The first thing that I want to tell you guys is thank you. Thank you so much for tuning in to this podcast If it's your first time, if it's the second or third or fourth time that you're tuning in, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. This podcast is a passion project. I really feel like I have a lot of things to share with the world as I'm healing and growing. I really want to share this journey with you and help you on your own journey towards more health and towards more growth. On a mission to help you heal and grow, it's on my Instagram bio, and that's really what this podcast is about, helping you heal and grow. So thank you so much for being here. The second thing is that if you're watching on YouTube, I've changed a little bit the background um, because I think it's a little bit nicer. I think it's a little bit cuter. I think it's a little bit of a better vibe, but I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to film here all the time just because this is more of a it's in the it's in the common space of where I live so if I can I will if not I'll have to film in my room a few times but that's also okay the other thing that I wanted to share with you before we start is that if you don't know who I am I'm Relaine I am a third year medical student in the UK I'm currently intercalating between third and fourth year in a tissue engineering master's but if you want to know more about me there is an episode podcast episode the first one will probably give you a lot more information and if not my instagram at differently more will give you a bit more of an idea of who i am i don't want to like drag on the introduction just because there are podcasts and there is other content out there that will give you those answers so yeah let's now dive into the topic of today which is boundaries and Before I dive into this, the actual framework that I have in store for you that I think is quite powerful and will allow you to get to reach a lot of transformation, I'm going to talk first about why is it so important to have strong boundaries? Why is it that I'm dedicating a whole podcast episode? I'm dedicating minutes. um, I've written a script and thought about it for a while. Why is it that I find this topic so important? And the reason for that is because I've noticed a lot in society with the people around me that a lot of people don't have strong boundaries at all. A lot of people don't even have boundaries or they do, but they don't uphold them. And I think that that is a recipe for having a life that you're not super content with or not getting to the place you want to go in life fast. And life is not about getting to the destination fast. Life is not about being the first to get there. That's not what it's about. But if you're consciously or unconsciously delaying your journey with something that you could actually work on and improve, then that's something I want to help you with. Because think about it this way. I'm going to share with you an analogy that I think will give you a a clear idea of how I view the importance of boundaries. So the analogy is using a car and a GPS. So every single every single time you're in a car, you're in an Uber, whatever it is, oftentimes to get to your destination, you put a, you use a GPS and you put the destination in, right? But let's say you were in a car with a GPS that rerouted every two minutes. Instead of taking the fastest route, every two minutes it would decide to turn right instead of staying straight on the highway. It would decide to take an exit, just because why not? Why not try it out? So it means that, that you would be rerouted every two minutes and you will have delay after delay and after delay and a destination that would have normally taken maybe 30 minutes to get there now takes, for some reason, maybe two, three, four, five hours, just because every two minutes your GPS is rerouting. And so that's how I view a life without boundaries. It's as if you had a GPS up here in your mind, in your brain, that was rerouting you constantly without a clear purpose. Because I feel like a a good GPS will reroute you. A good GPS will reroute you if there's an accident, if there's traffic, to get you to your destination as safely and as quickly as possible. But if you have no boundaries, if you have weak boundaries, if you were in a car of your life's purpose, if you don't have strong boundaries, you will turn right or turn left, get off of the exit at the motorway when you don't really need to. And that will reroute and reroute and reroute all the time. You will still get there, but it's going to take a very long time because you don't have strong boundaries of no, I am staying on the motorway because this is where I'm supposed to be. And even if it looks super, super, super tempting to take exit A, I'm not going to. Even if every single person in front of me is taking exit A, 
I'm not going to because I know that the motorway will be the quickest, most easy way to get to my destination. And so that's how I view boundaries. That's how that's sort of the analogy. And I think that having a life with strong boundaries will allow you to live out your purpose in the best way, but it will also allow you to get to where you want to go faster. If you don't have boundaries, it means that you're constantly distracted. You're constantly doing something that doesn't feel right to you. You're constantly feeling misaligned. And over time, you start diluting your self-trust, diluting your self-confidence because you have no boundaries because you know that if somebody shows you something that's half as attra- half attractive enough to you, you're probably going to take it. You're probably going to take the offer, even though you know that it's not for your highest good. And so that's why I want to dedicate a whole episode to boundaries because it's so important to have them. You know, boundaries are sexy, please. We live in a society these days where I feel like not having any boundaries and just going wherever the wind blows where the wind takes you is the is the right way to do things these days it's the way that's the most conventional but it shouldn't be it should be that people should be dancing to their own rhythm rather than letting other people create the rhythm and then you have to kind of tumble your way in and you know follow another person's rhythm that's not how life should be so that's why i think that boundaries are super 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 important And cultivating them, upholding them, creating them can be a process that's fun, uh, even though it might be a little bit daunting if you've never had strong boundaries, if you've never been able to uphold them, or if you just have a sense of not having super, super strong confidence within yourself that that's something you can do. But I'm here to tell you and I'm here to show you that this is possible. It's possible. It might be a little bit of an uncomfortable process, but it's possible. So let me take you on this journey. Let me take you on this three-step framework that I think will help you create strong boundaries and uphold them to start finally living life on your terms and get to your destination, get to where you want to be as fast as possible and as safely as possible, just like the GPS. So this framework is a three-part framework. The first one, we're going to talk about how to actually create boundaries. The second part, we're going to actually talk about how to uphold them because it's important, obviously, to create them, know your boundaries, know what they are, but it's also super important to actually uphold them and stay true to them and stay firm with your boundaries. And then the last section is going to be kind of the troubleshooting, things to expect in this journey Um, just to make you feel a little bit less lonely if you encounter any issues um, with this whole process, okay? Maybe before we do that, why should you actually listen to me? Why are you listening to this random girl on the internet telling you about boundaries? Why is that something that you might want to do? I think it's because I'm someone that has very strong boundaries. Um, I grew up with uh, a family and a father especially that kept on telling me to dare not to dare, to dance to the dance to my own rhythm, do what it was that felt right to me, which meant that I grew up feeling quite different from other people, not drinking as much as other people, and just feeling quite different, but always following my own um, my own rhythm and what it was that I wanted to do. And I've had a lot of people in my life tell me that I have very strong boundaries and how do you do it? And I'm so confused. Alain has such strong boundaries and you actually uphold them. Like, that's crazy. And I'm here to tell you, it's not crazy. You can, it's, that's also possible for you. And that's why I feel relatively qualified to talk about this. So if you feel called to stay and to continue listening to me, please do. So let's start with the first step, which is how to create boundaries. And listen, I'm pretty sure that the first thing I'm going to tell you in this is not what you're expecting at all. I'm pretty sure that you're expecting me to tell you something like, take your journal and write about your values and think about what's important to you. And that will come. I will talk about this. But the first most crucial, crucial step in creating strong boundaries starts with self-love. And why? Why does it start with self-love? It's because this is the foundation. Because the moment you start loving yourself is the moment where you start to know your value, you start to know your worth. And with with knowing your worth, knowing your value, and starting to actually intrinsically love yourself and treat yourself as if you were treating your best friend, as if you were treating your sister, your brother, your mother, your father, somebody that you love deeply, okay? The moment you start treating your own self the same way that you treat people that you love deeply, you will start to realize 
that naturally there are certain things that you used to do that have now become unacceptable. There are certain things that you used to allow in your life that are now unacceptable. There are certain things in your life that you used to allow that are now an absolute, you have an absolute rejection of these things. And so it's almost as if if you start with a strong foundation of self-love, the actual creation of boundaries becomes a lot more effortless because it's almost like it's the natural next step. Okay, now I love myself a lot more. Now I've worked on this part of myself and I feel like a, I feel worthy and I feel valuable and I, and I, and I have all of these positive feelings about myself within me now the next step is an is effortless okay because I feel this way all of these other things that I used to accept all of these other things that I used to do even though I knew it wasn't it was misaligned with me are now unacceptable and so now the normal natural next step is okay I'm gonna create some boundaries I'm gonna create some clear, strong boundaries to help me navigate this and to make sure that my peace that I've worked so hard on is not disturbed. To make sure that I love myself correctly. And loving yourself comes with strong boundaries as well. But to create strong boundaries, you it starts with a foundation of self-love, in my opinion. And you might tell me actually now, Alain, I'm confused. I, I came here to listen about something about boundaries and now you're talking to me about self-love and like, I don't feel like I have a lot of self-love and like, how do I cultivate that? Don't you worry. The next podcast episode on the Differently More podcast will be all about self-love. So if that's something that you feel like when I was talking about this, like raise something in you was like, oh, this is, this doesn't feel right. This feels a little bit like I probably have something to work on there. I will have content for you on that. That's the next podcast episode that is being filmed soon. So please, don't you worry, it's coming. I'm here to help you. We're going to talk all about self-love soon. Okay, now let's get back into the actual step. How do you create boundaries? So the next step in this is to actually audit your life. And why is that important? Why am I not, again, diving into just write the boundaries down? It's because a lot of the times... We don't know what our boundaries are. If you are someone that has never really had boundaries, you don't know what your boundaries are. You might have a little inclination of it. You might have a little bit of a, maybe that's a boundary, but you don't necessarily know hard and strong, this is a boundary of mine and I don't want this to be crossed. And so auditing your life and looking at the times when you felt uncomfortable in certain certain situations will help you to notice what sort of, like what are your boundaries? Because you can't, create strong boundaries if you don't even know what the boundary is okay so in this step when you're auditing your life how can you actually notice when a boundary that is still unconscious to you at this time has been crossed the way I think that you can do this is looking at times when you've made decisions that you didn't feel very good after that maybe you withdrew maybe you immediately started to distract yourself so let's say you made a decision you did something in your life and then immediately you start scrolling on Instagram or immediately then you start like you want to go out and like drink or something. So moments in your life when you felt not good after something has happened, you withdrew, you distracted, um, something in you just before you made that decision told you, hey, hold up, maybe that's not what we want to do. But you just you just put that voice, little voice down, you stepped on it and then you continued and you made that decision. So sometimes we have these things that can allow us to, these are kind of like little red flags when you audit your life of like, oh, this is ringing a bell. Maybe this was a point that is a boundary. So for example, for me, I have a, a moment in my life which was a little bit difficult where I definitely overstepped a boundary. And so if I'm auditing my life, I look back on this point in time. It, it was with drinking. It was um, during freshers. I had a little bit too much to drink than I wanted to because I felt peer pressured basically to do that. And I remember feeling horrible after. I remember feeling like I cried, I called my parents, I was crying because I really felt like I had deceived myself. And okay, that's an, it might be an extreme example. And I'm somebody that's very sensitive, very in tune with my emotions. So having such a hard reaction is my is the way that I react but maybe the way you react to moments where you've overstepped a sort of unconscious boundary is a little bit dimmer maybe you've with as I said maybe you withdrew maybe you've gone quiet maybe you felt a little bit numb some people feel numb and so 
try to look back on your life in and notice those moments and you might not be able to so if that's not something that you can do when just try to be conscious in the next few weeks when you're living your life every time you make a decision is how do you feel after was that something you actually wanted to do so when you're auditing your life try to find those moments when you had those reactions afterwards and maybe notice if there's a pattern in all of the different instances. So let's say maybe every single time you withdrew or you didn't feel good after a, de- a decision, it was after the exact same decision. And so then you can be like, you can find a pattern like, well, that's a pattern. Clearly that should be one of my boundaries because every single time I make that decision, I don't feel great after. Every single time I make that decision, I withdraw. Every single time I make that decision, I'm distracted. Okay, so that's an element. But for some people, you might just not be able to fully highlight those things looking in hindsight. So maybe what you could do is for the next few weeks, whenever you make a decision, consciously think about it and notice what it is that your heart, what your body is telling you. If there's a little voice being like, hey, don't do that. And then you you shut it down. Try to notice how you feel after you make decisions. Do you feel good? Do you withdraw? So like try to like consciously look at your life either in hindsight or from now looking at What decisions are you making and are they making you feel good or make you not feel that good? And that's often how you can notice what are the things in your life that probably should be boundaries. The other thing that I want to talk about in this um, section is before we move on to the next one is that we all have boundaries. Okay, I think an element of being healthy and an element of having a good, positive, happy life is to have strong boundaries that you actually uphold and we all have them that's a need that we all have within ourselves to have strong boundaries it's kind of like a way to protect your castle protect your kingdom protect your empire but some of us just those those barriers are kind of foggy they're in the distance you can't really see them so you're kind of just running through them and you can't really see them but with this with here i'm just trying to help you in this step audit your life and slowly but surely move those clouds away, move the fog away so you can see the clear barriers that you want to have around your empire, around your house. This is what I'm trying to help you with. So this step is really crucial to help you notice um, the boundaries that you might not realize are things that are important to you. So now that you have a much clearer understanding of what your boundaries could be, you have a clear understanding of what it is that you want to create as boundaries in your life, it's now time to actually make that list and write what those boundaries are. So that's the time where you get the journal, you get the pen, and you start writing them. But you see how if you hadn't started with the foundation of self-love, you hadn't actually reflected on your life and looked at the moments that didn't bring you that much joy And so you can infer from those that these is probably something that's a boundary of yours. Then you couldn't write proper, true, authentic boundaries of yours on the paper. So you can't get to the paper. That can't be step one. Step one and two has to be um, the self-love and the reflection of your life, auditing your life before you can get to the journal. So when you get to the journal and you write down the list of your boundaries, please make sure that they're clear and specific your subconscious mind, your brain likes things that are clear and specific. Whenever you're writing those boundaries, because obviously at this point in time, right, you have kind of a list of things that you think could be boundaries because you've noticed that when you've reflected on your life, whenever you've made this decision, you didn't feel too good. But there might be something in you that's still like, "Mm, I'm not sure if this is actually a true boundary. How can you know that for sure? Well, when you're actually putting pen to paper, if you feel this sort of positive influx of emotion whenever you're writing this down, that's a good sign. It's like, yeah, that's probably a boundary because it almost as if your brain is like understanding fully, okay, we're putting, we're crystallizing this thing that we've thought about for a while and we're writing it on paper. And the action of writing it on paper is making you realize, oh, no, 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 this is definitely something that I feel so positive about and I like because this thought of having this boundary and setting it on paper and in the physical world is making me realize no like that's definitely something I want to do because if I respect this then I can get quicker and safer to my destination and that feels good it's almost as if a a weight is lifted off of your shoulders because you're like oh goodness now that I have this boundary it's almost as if yeah I have a rule in my life I have something that I'm gonna respect it's almost as if your brain can stop 
thinking. You've made a decision. This is not something that I want to do anymore. This is not something I want to like uh, be a part of. So every single time you have um, a moment in life when you have to make a decision surrounding this, because you have a clear boundary, you immediately know what your answer is. You don't have to think anymore. You don't have to be like, oh, maybe I should do it, but I know I probably shouldn't. And like, am I going to feel good? No, you've made that decision. Now you know. My answer is no. And so it's almost as if you're like, okay, you have so much more space because you don't have to think as much whenever this thing is going to come in your life because you know exactly what your answer is. So that's the first way that you can probably know that the reflection brought to you something that is a clear boundary of yours. The other thing that you can do is that whenever you write those boundaries on paper, if you imagine a scenario in your head, if you visualize a scenario in your head, when you uphold that boundary, okay, so you close your eyes and you think about, okay, there's this thing that I want to stop doing. So whenever I go to a club, I don't want to be drinking in clubs because that doesn't feel aligned. I just like dancing in clubs and I don't want to drink and I don't want to be drunk in a club anymore. Think about a scenario where you're thinking about a moment when you're in a club and you're actually not drunk. You haven't drunk at all that whole evening and you're just having fun and you're dancing with your friends and you're just having a really, really fun time. Whenever you're imagining this and you're writing it on paper and you're, and you're thinking about this thing and you've actually achieved your boundary, do you feel proud? Do you feel proud of yourself? Do you feel proud of your future self? Like, oh my God, she's so cool. She did that and she enjoyed it and she was just dancing and she wasn't drinking. Or do you feel indifferent to it? Are you like, yeah, that's cool, but like, eh, like that's fine. If you have a feeling when you're visualizing yourself achieving this sort of boundary that you're setting and you feel proud of yourself, you feel almost as if like, wow, if I could do that, I would feel so happy within myself. Then you probably know that that's a boundary of yours. If you feel just kind of indifferent, then that might not be as strong as a steadfast boundary as you thought it was. So let's say, I don't know, that there's a scenario where you've reflected on your life and you've realized like, oh, every single time I eat bread, I actually don't feel that good about it. And so I think I would prefer having gluten-free bread instead. And so my kind of boundary now to myself is like, every time I go to a restaurant, I want to eat gluten-free bread. Every time I go out to Sainsbury's or Tesco's or Walmart or wherever you buy your food, I would like to buy gluten-free bread because I think that will make me feel better. If you then close your eyes and imagine a situation where you're at Walmart, you're at Tesco, you're at a restaurant and you, you choose the gluten-free option and you feel, well, how do you feel? If you actually realize that you don't feel that good, you're kind of like, yeah, that, that was cool of me, but like, eh, it's probably not that strong of a boundary. It might just be something that you would like for yourself, but it's not a clear, hard, fast, strong steady boundary of yours. And so I think this exercise, when you're writing down the boundaries on paper, can really help to see which ones are actually the most important, true to you boundaries. Because a lot of the times when you're going to audit your life, there's going to be a lot of things that are going to come up, okay? And so in step three, making that list will allow you to put everything on down to paper and doing those exercises will actually allow you to figure out, okay, what is actually important to me on this list what is actually truly fully important and then once you've made that whole list you've done all of these exercises you can then either highlight on that list the actual boundaries your real true ones that you felt proud of when you imagined them and that you felt this good positive feeling when you wrote them you can either highlight those or you can create another list where you just copy paste the few boundaries that are your hard strong steadfast boundaries so that's how i think you would create a boundary. And so do you, you see that it's, it's a process. It's not like an overnight thing. It takes time. It takes refining. Boundaries don't always just come like that. A lot of the times it's trial and error. You do something and you realize, oh no, that was not good. Oh my God, I feel so bad. I feel so embarrassed. Why did I do that? And then you, you add to those boundaries. And then sometimes you realize, oh, I broke a boundary that I thought was a boundary. And I actually don't feel that. I kind of feel indifferent to it. I don't feel that horrific about it at all. So maybe that actually wasn't that hard step out of a boundary. So do you see how this process is actually quite complex? Now I'm actually getting literally out of breath. <laughs> I've spoken so much today. Okay, now let's get into how do you actually uphold those boundaries? Because it's all fun and games to create them, to go on this whole process of self-love and 
uh, auditing your life, reflecting on all of the decisions that you make and if it's like if they make you feel good and then writing a list and all of that. It's fun to do that. But if you have this list of boundaries that you know are super important for you to respect, because boundaries are kind of like rules, the rules that will allow you to live a more happy, authentic life that will allow you to get to your destination faster and safer. That's what a boundary, in my opinion, is. So if you have all of those boundaries, but you don't know how to uphold them, there's no point to have creating them. Might as well just continue living life the way you used to. So how do you actually uphold them? The first thing, again, I don't think you're going to expect me to start with this, but the first thing is that it should start with forgiveness, okay? And acceptance that you will not be perfect, that you will have moments when you're going to slip up. Okay, the goal here is not to be perfect and it's not to never slip up. The goal here is to stand back up every single time you inevitably make a mistake. That's the goal here. And so I think starting this section of how to uphold boundaries with a sense of like, okay, the first thing is I need to forgive myself in advance that I will make mistakes. Because think about it this way. If you've made a decision over and over and over and over and over and over again in your life, it's not gonna be tomorrow that this decision is not gonna happen anymore, okay? Your brain is used to firing a certain way. Your neurons are used to working a certain way. So your neurons are used to responding in a certain way to a certain situation. And so now that you've created a new boundary that will actually force you to respond in a different way to the same situation, it will take some time for your neurons to rewire in a different way for you to make this other decision consistently. So have forgiveness, be nice to yourself, accept that you will slip up and that is okay. That's the only way we grow, okay? If you stayed, sat on your couch and did nothing, you would never grow. But the moment you decide to stand up, to walk around, to take stairs, to cross the road, to take a bus, to drive, you will inevitably have small accidents happen to you here and there. You're going to fall. There's water. Your shoes are going to get dirty. You might slip. You might you might trip in the stairs. So the moment you take start taking action, you will inevitably slip up. Okay. so first step is forgive yourself. Forgive yourself in advance. The next way that I think is will, will help you uphold your boundaries is actually, um, you know how we were talking about um, neurons and how your neurons currently are used to making a certain decision, are used to firing in a certain way in your brain um, in response to a certain situation. And now actually that you've created a new boundary, you want your neurons to fire a different way, but with the same situation. And that's something that's hard to do for your brain, right? Your brain is not used to making a different decision based on a same situation. Your brain likes the path of least resistance. So if you show your brain situation A, it's gonna want so damn hard to make the decision that you've always made before because that's what it's used to. That's how your brain is used to using those neurons. If that's how your brain is used to fire, those neurons are used to fire together in a very specific way and make that decision based on this situation. And right now you're asking your brain to do something completely different. And your brain doesn't like that because it demands more energy, it's more difficult, it's not comfortable. And that's why this whole process of upholding boundaries is relatively hard. But a way that you can use to actually make this process a little bit simpler is to use visualization. So visualization is something that a lot of athletes use. Uh, before they do like their performances and it's basically you close your eyes you imagine step by step the situation and what you're going to do so for example athletes will imagine the whole routine that they have to perform musicians will imagine exactly which notes they have to press at which point in time and that actually allows your brain to use those neurons and fire them in a very specific way so basically using visualization will allow you to start strengthening the other nervous nervous pathway that you want to strengthen without actually even being presented this situation. So let's say you have you want to uphold a boundary that you now are only going out once a week because this is what feels aligned and you want to have more you time and spend a bit more time alone to get your, to get to know yourself a little bit better. Spend time visualizing in your brain moments when you say you decline offers to go out so you're at uni and then you have your friend saying you oh we're going to the pub tonight come with us and you're actually imagining yourself politely declining and imagine a few different situations of you doing that that will actually allow your brain to start creating those neural pathways even if 
that situation hasn't happened in real life. And it means that when you're, this situation happens in real life, your brain has had practice. Your brain has neurons that are used to firing together in this particular situation, even if, even if that situation is happening for the first time in real life that day. So visualization can be something that is super, super, super important and super helpful in this process of learning to uphold your boundaries because you're learning, teaching your nervous, your brain and your neurons to fire in a different way, even if the situation hasn't actually materialized yet. So you're basically giving your brain free practice, which will allow you to be a lot more successful whenever that situation does happen in your real life. The other thing that I think is quite good for you guys uh, to start upholding your boundaries is do you know that that list that you've created um choose one choose one boundary that you want to focus on first one by one okay because if you as i said this is a difficult process for your brain to rewire so if you're actually asking your brain to rewire five six seven i don't know how many different pathway it's going to be a lot because remember life is not stopping it's not because you've made that decision to create boundaries that now you're suddenly going to have 10 hours a day to process all of this and that now you don't have to go to uni, you don't have to go to work, you don't have kids anymore. No, life is still going on. So your brain, if you're going to put on your brain seven different boundaries that it now has to learn how to uphold, it's going to be super, super complex. So focus first on one boundary, the most important one to ye off that list and focus on that one. So that means that your brain has one thing to focus on. And the good thing about your brain is that when your brain has learned how to uphold one boundary, it's the second one will be easier and the third one will be even easier and the fourth one will be even easier and easier and easier because you gain confidence with it as well. You realize, oh, I can do this. I can change my patterns. I can decide to create strong boundaries and live a life that feels more authentic to me. So another piece of advice is to only choose one boundary and focus only on that one first. And then when that one is mostly sorted and mostly you feel comfortable with it, then add a second one onto that. The other thing I think that is important in this to talk about is that when you have those instances, when you have moments in real life where you successfully uphold one of your boundaries, okay? Reflect on this. How did it feel? Did you feel good afterwards? Did you feel different? I think that's going to be really important, especially when we're going to talk about the troubleshooting section, is to, yeah, once you've successfully upheld a boundary, reflect on it and how did you feel about it? Because then it means that this whole process is a conscious process. This whole process is a process where your brain is engaged in changing that pattern, changing that habit and creating something new, some, a new pattern and a new habit for yourself. So having a place where you can actually write down your thoughts about how you felt is actually really good. And the more you do that, it might be actually through this of like reflecting on um, how you feel when you uphold, uphold your boundaries that you might realize at some point, hey, actually I feel consistent. The last few times that I've journaled on this, I felt so good about upholding this boundary. So maybe actually I'm now, I can do this now. So maybe I can actually add a new boundary now on top that I want to work on. And then the other thing that I want to talk to you guys about here is that if you make a mistake, again, we've said, we started with forgiveness, okay? But if you make a mistake and you slip up, you can always decide to choose differently during that same situation. Let me explain what I mean. Let's say we use the same example. You now want to only go out once a week because you want to spend more time with yourself. You can maybe, let's say you're at uni and this friend comes up to you, again, the same situation. Hey, let's go out to the pub tonight. And instead of saying no, you actually slip up and you're like, okay, yeah, that's fine. Let's go. What time are we meeting? She's like, oh, let's meet at half seven and let's go to some, some random bar. Obviously, because you're in this headspace where you're trying to create boundaries, you're trying to uphold your boundaries because you know that it's something that you feel that you want to do. You, you will feel a heightened sense of like, oh, that wasn't good. Oh, like you feel this, you feel not happy with yourself. You don't feel proud of yourself. Like, oh, I've worked so hard. I visualized, I did all of these things. And yet again, I still said yes. And it was so hard to say no. First of all, we said forgiveness. Forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself. It's okay. We all slip up in life. But it doesn't mean that you have to wait till the next time that Susie asks you to go out to say no. You can actually go home, reflect on this, reflect on how you feel, and send Susie a message. I don't know why I called her Susie, but she's called Susie now. And send Susie a message being like, hey, actually I thought about it and actually I don't feel too good about going out tonight. I'm probably just gonna stay in and have a chill one instead. And that 
still means that you've held your boundary. Yes, it was a bit of a rocky start. Yes, it wasn't as perfect as you might have imagined and imagined and envisioned, but it's a learning process. You're growing. You're, you're learning step by step. So you don't have to wait till the next time that Susie asks you to say no. You actually can decline that. You can actually say, actually, I know I said yes, but actually I'm just going to like say no now. I don't actually want to go you know, you can still do that and that will still leave you more proud of yourself because you you still, at the end of the day, you still respected that boundary. You didn't go out, you still respected that boundary. So again, that's that's something else that I think is quite, quite good to do and to know about on like this whole section of how to uphold your boundaries. The other thing after that is to reflect on this. Reflect on how next time, instead of sending Susie a message, maybe next time you tell her in person, the moment she asks you and you decline there. So how can you how, how can you do this next time in a better quote unquote way? How can you achieve that goal next time in the way that you want to? Maybe you have maybe you realize, hey, actually I have been like slacking off of my on my visualizations. I haven't visualized the scenario in a while. So let me like spend the next three, four days visualizing this a little bit more because I think that will help me next time Susie asks. You know what I mean? So you can notice the places that you were lacking at the places that you were struggling with and then work on those that next time you can perform quote unquote a little bit better and uphold those boundaries in a bit more of a streamlined way. Okay, we're getting to the last section. I am getting exhausted. I've been speaking forever and my throat is hurting. But third section, which is troubleshooting and things to expect on this journey. Again, I love to keep things real. I don't want to do some sort of superficial, it's all gonna be perfect, it's all gonna be great. No, it probably won't be, and that's okay. Um, we're all human. We all make mistakes. So let's talk about them. Let's talk about the troubleshooting and how this process actually feels and what to actually expect in this process. Okay, I don't know what happened. My camera was overheating, so it shut down. So we're going to start back from where we ended. For people that are watching on YouTube, if the color of the video has now kind of changed, it's because the sun is setting and so the lighting is changing constantly. So yeah, I'm sorry about that. Anyways, let's get back into the tr third section, which is troubleshooting and things to expect in this journey, because it's not going to be necessarily a journey that is the easiest to go on. Okay. It's a courageous, bold, brave journey to step into. And so there will be moments that will be difficult where you're going to have to troubleshoot. And so this section is kind of me trying to give you a little bit of a sneak peek into what to expect. What are the things that might happen on this journey so that whenever they do happen, if they do happen, that you can, can feel a little bit more at peace with it, a little bit more like, you know what? I knew this was coming and I'm prepared. I want you guys to feel a little bit more prepared through this section because again, I love and I really want to go above and beyond with all of, with all that I put out there and this podcast and how I help you. So I'm just trying to help you guys be a little bit more prepared for what could be coming so that you don't feel like, oh my God, this is not normal. Nobody else is going through this. Most of what I'm going to tell you is going to allow you to feel more, much more like, no, this is normal. This, this makes sense. This is okay. So the first thing I want to tell you is that up, up implementing boundaries and upholding them. So creating and implementing boundaries and upholding them is difficult. And when you do make the decisions to choose differently and to listen to yourself and uphold those boundaries, you probably will feel uncomfortable. I'm talking mostly from an experience and you might not feel uncomfortable, but I probably know and feel that a lot of people would feel quite uncomfortable with upholding those boundaries. And the reason why I say that is because it's difficult. Okay, like I know that I talked about in the beginning of this podcast how people have told me that I have strong boundaries and I actually uphold them and how do I do that? And I do do all of these things. But simultaneously, I know and realize that I do sometimes, often, <laughs> when I do, do when I do make those decisions, feel a little bit weird and a little bit uncomfortable because I feel like I'm making a decision that nobody else around me is making. And so I feel different. And I talked about this feeling of being different a, a lot on my second episode of this podcast and how I've moved on through this and how I've like changed my mindset around this. But setting your boundaries 
and upholding them will probably make you feel uncomfortable. And I'm just here to tell you and let you know that it's normal and that it's not because, because I know, I know that some of you here are going to go through this journey and you're going to feel uncomfortable. Like, well, I'm not supposed to feel uncomfortable after I set a boundary. That's not normal. She told me to look at the times in my life where I made a decision and I felt uncomfortable and now I made a different decision and I still feel uncomfortable. So surely this is not one of my boundaries. And I'm here to tell you that that's, it's not as simple as that. And a lot of the times, the, uh, the discomfort, the withdrawal, the negative emotions that you felt at the, uh, looking at the decisions you were making initially about a certain situation. So let's say you were saying yes every single time somebody told you to go out. Those negative emotions that you were feeling were because you were overstepping your boundary and you actually were not respecting what it is that you actually truly wanted, what was for your highest good. Whereas the discomfort that you're feeling now that you've implemented those boundaries that are for your highest good, that are aligned with who you want to be, you're feeling discomfort because you now feel different. You feel discomfort because you're like, okay, now I'm doing these decisions, but everybody around me, all the people around me, all of my friends are not making the same decision as me. So now it means that I'm different. Now it means that I'm separate from the group and that is what makes you uncomfortable. So yes, the feeling might be the same, but the reasoning and the root of those feelings are very, very different. So my advice with that is do it uncomfortable, do it with fear. You're never going to be fully ready. And you'd rather be fully respecting your boundaries and fully feeling aligned with feeling of discomfort than feeling misaligned and still feeling uncomfortable. There's a un- discomfort that is quite nice because this discomfort is temporary. When you, feel, when you find your people, when you meet people that have the same boundaries as you, that are living life in a similar way as you, this discomfort is probably going to leave and at least really, really, really quiet down um, compared to how it might have been in the beginning. Whereas the discomfort of overstepping your boundaries time and time again will not quiet down it will if anything just get louder and louder and louder until you decide to do something about it the next thing uh, that kind of goes on from that is that you might feel lonely in this process it might this process of setting boundaries might thrust you into a season of life where you feel a little bit more lonely and you feel a little bit more disconnected to the people around you and that's because a lot of the time we attract what we are so if you were somebody that had no boundaries and that was not respecting them. The people around you, your friends, are probably people that also don't have very strong boundaries. There might be a few exceptions, but more likely than not, the people around you that are really close to you don't really have strong boundaries either. And so the moment you decide, okay, I want to have strong boundaries and I want to uphold them, that means that you're now, as I said, different from the pack. And so you're living life in a different way than other people. So now it means that you can't really relate as much and as and in the same way that you used to relate with your crowd and your people. And so that will inevitably obviously make you feel lonely and and different and disconnected from your people. And what I'm here to tell you is that maybe through this process, you're going to realize that it's time to find new people. Or through this process, you're going to inspire a lot of people around you to actually go on this journey themselves. And you might realize that, yeah, you're actually still similar and you actually have similar boundaries. You just both were or as a group you just were not upholding any of them and you choosing to do different might lead the way and open the way pave the way to the other people in your friend group or the people that are around you to take a similar route to you but it could also not and it could also mean that it's time for you to close a certain chapter of your life and open a new one and find other people that are more aligned with who you want to be. As I said, uh, I have a podcast episode on feeling different and the mindset shift around that that I often use. So if that's something that you struggle with at some point in time during this journey, just know that I'm there if you need if you need me. I have a podcast episode all about that that will, I'm sure, help you to feel better and to feel proud in your difference, okay? To feel strong in your difference. Moving on to the last two things. The other thing that I think could be helpful whenever you have issues with this whole process and you need to some help with troubleshooting for um, boundary setting is maybe if you have somebody around you that has strong boundaries, it might be your mother, it might be your grandma, it might be a friend, it might be an older sister, a cousin, whatever it is. 
if you have somebody in your life that you know that you look up to because they have strong boundaries, it might be good to actually go to them and connect with them about this new thing that you want to do with your life and open up a conversation about, hey, like, how did you get to having strong, such strong boundaries? Did anybody help you? Was it an innate thing? Did you have to learn it? Did you ever feel different? I'm going through this thing and I don't know if it's normal. Having all of those conversations with a real life person, because I can only help you to a certain degree through the internet and through this podcast. But the people around you, the real, true, tangible people around you can help you probably as well on this journey. So if you have anybody that you can talk to that can help you with this, please reach out to them. Don't feel ashamed. Don't feel scared. Just reach out to them. Especially if there's somebody that loves you, they will definitely want to help you, hopefully. And the last thing that I want to do and talk about is the topic about self-love that I talked about at the beginning um, and anything that you need help with to release certain more negative emotions. So if you're feeling uncomfortable, if you're feeling different, if you're feeling like you're kind of in a place or a narrative where you're not loving yourself as much as you would want to, all of these things, I'm just going to give you two different techniques that I think could be quite good. So there's hypnosis that you can do. So Marissa Peer has quite a few guided hypnosis sessions in on her YouTube channel for free that you can use. And if not, you can use EFT tapping. I feel like I rave about EFT tapping these days, but it's really, really useful. It helps me a lot. And the one that I often use is tap with Brad. So you can do that to also help yourself foster a bit more self-love, release those more negative emotions of feeling comfortable and feeling different from other people that will probably arise from this whole process. And so these are kind of just final suggestions to kind of help you on this journey as much as I can. But if not, I think that we've reached the end of this podcast. We've reached the end of our time together. Yeah, I really hope that this was useful. Personally, I've struggled a little bit to articulate my thoughts today so I don't know if you've noticed this but I spend a lot of time today talking with a friend and so and I really have to film this podcast today and so I feel a little bit depleted in my brain and it almost feels as if I was talking to you and then every single thought the next thought would disappear just before I would talk about it so I don't know if you've noticed that but I've tried my best I've taken a lot of pauses in between to gather my thoughts so I hope that I was still clear that the message still has come through but yeah I'm human just like you guys I will stumble I will make mistakes here and there I might not always be on my a game but I've tried I've tried my hardest and I really hope that I'm sure that this still has value but I'm just telling you how I was feeling when I was recording this podcast I really hope that you enjoyed this because a lot of us these days are struggling with this topic, are struggling with boundaries. And we really, I think, collectively needed this to get to a place where we can get to our purpose and live the life that we want to live on our terms in a faster and safer way that is more aligned with who we want to be. So I hope that this was useful to you and I'm gonna go because clearly my brain is so fried but if you did enjoy this podcast please subscribe to the podcast please leave a review leave a comment and if you're watching on YouTube please subscribe to my YouTube channel like this video share this video with other people that could benefit from it as well if you want to figure out where to find me in other places you can find me on Instagram at differently more so yeah if not guys I'm gonna go thank you so much for listening if you're still here after I don't even know how long maybe almost an hour now thank you Thank you so much and I can't wait to see you for the next episode of this podcast all about self-love. Yeah, bye guys.